Chase Green and Jana Hogg in Christian marriage. The covenant of marriage was established by God who created us to share life and love with one another. And with his presence and power, Jesus graced a wedding at Cana of Galilee. And in his sacrificial love, gave us the example for love of those who give their lives in covenant with one another. Chase and Jana come this afternoon to give themselves to one another in this holy covenant. And let us all praise God together as we sing the hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
I think those gathered here today did a really good job on that hymn. I'm wondering if there's any clergy that are here today. <laughs> At this time, we'll have the Declaration of Intention. And so Chase and Jana, I ask you now, in the presence of God, and all of these family and friends, to declare your intention to enter into union with one another through the grace of Jesus Christ, who has called us into union with himself through our baptism. And so, Jana, will you have Chase to be your husband, to live together in holy marriage? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? I will. Chase, will you have Jana to be your wife, to live together in holy marriage? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? I will. I invite you to face the congregation. <laughs> the marriage of Chase and Jana unites two families and creates a new one. They ask for your blessing. Will all of you gathered here this afternoon, by God's grace, do everything in your power to uphold and care for these two persons in their marriage? At this time, we'll invite Dustin Burrow to come forward to lead us in prayer and the reading of the scripture. Let us pray. God of all peoples, you are the true light illuminating everyone. You show us the way, the truth, and the life. You show us love even when we are disobedient. You sustain us with your Holy Spirit. We rejoice in your life in the midst of our lives. We praise you for your presence with us, and especially in this act of solemn covenant, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The reading comes from 1 John 4, verses 7 through 16. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice of our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God if we love one another. God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Amen. Amen. In the covenant of marriage, as we bind two together, it is the love of God that surely unites the two of you. And this love is based on the grace of God. Today, of all days, you feel really good, and you feel that, you feel that love towards your partner. It's the common interest that we have together that you formed as friendships that allowed you to come together as two united. Neither of those things, the feelings, the good feelings, the common interests, are what really bind you today. 
It is the love of the grace of God, which comes to us again and again and again. It is out of this strength that we establish the marriage covenant. As we think about it, uh, as pastors, I know you probably already taught Sunday school classes to where you've prioritized, you know, and you've said, what, what is our priority in life? What are we going to do? And, and what are the things? And all of our laity always know the right answer for the number one at the top of the list, right? When I say, what is the top of our priority? What are we supposed to say? Jesus. God, Jesus, yeah, or God, yeah, either one. We're Trinitarian, so we can handle either answer. Yeah, we say God is right up there at the top. And yet, sometimes we have people say, but really, a lot of times it's my family that comes first, uh, my children or my spouse or others who are very close to me. And I, wanna, I know I should put God first, but somehow these others seem to be propped up. And the marvelous thing about the letter of John today that we heard Dustin read was that we really can't divorce God from the love of our family, from the love of our spouse, from the love we have in our marriage. God is a part of that. God is the love that binds us together, that self-sacrificing love that we have for one another, that even though there's things we might rather do, we may put those on hold for the good of the other. And we do that time and time again in marriage. And it's a wonderful thing. You know, as I thought about what to say on this day, I thought, well, there's a lot of Methodist clergy here, and I thought, maybe we should talk about Wesleyan Grace All right. and really, really kind of explore that a little bit. I thought that Wesleyan Grace really kind of speaks to the marriage and that provenient grace, that love that comes to us before we even realize it, is kind of that part in the dating process when you first get to know each other. In fact, Janet told me a story the other day, and she said that when Chase first asked her out on a date, that she wasn't really aware that he was asking her out. She thought that you were like saying, let's just go hang out and get some dinner or something like that. And she's like, well, I got some other plans and didn't really think too much of it and just thought he was being nice as a friend. And then it was later when he did finally have to hit her over the head and say, hey, let's date, you know, <laughs> that she realized, oh, wow. And she asked him later, she said, well, so that other time, were you really asking me out? And he said, yeah, I was trying to ask you out. I was trying to, we were trying to make a date here. And so, in a sense, the love of God worked through their relationship, their friendship. What a wonderful thing to start a romantic relationship as friends, where you really get to know each other and you build those common interests and that common friendship. And we understand that God is at work in that, that God is at work in bringing you together and uniting you. As we think about justifying grace, that grace that makes us right with God in Christ Jesus, it's very similar to the vows that we make today, that when we take these vows together, as we make those vows and we pledge our lives in our profession of faith before God, what we realize is that we've already had that grace, and that grace has been there as a part of our lives, and we can trust in that grace, that that grace will never leave us, that God will be with us throughout our lives, through thick and thin, ups and downs, and that is a wonderful blessing, an assurance that we have in our lives that even when we don't feel it, yet God is still there with us, that God remains with us. So it is also with your vows today. The vows that you take today are saying that I will be there for you. I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to abandon you through thick and through thin, ups and downs. We are going to be there together. And just as in justifying grace, in the marriage vow, we say that we are stronger together then we are apart. As we consider, as I mentioned, feelings, there are some days in life that as Christians, we don't necessarily feel God's presence very strongly. In fact, there are some days that we doubt God's presence uh, to be with us at all. Some days at our lowest times. And yet, when we continue to have the response to be in relationship with God continually, whether it be through worship or prayer or study, even in the low times when we don't necessarily feel it, those are the times when our faith is really strengthened for us. When faith means something, it means that we are living out what we really believe, whether we feel it or not. So it is with the marriage. As you feel today, so close to one another, this will not always be the case each and every day. Now, I'd say probably most days, but there's going to be some days when... 
you may not have that strong sense of feeling for one another. <laughs> and yet, it is the love of God, the love, the grace that we receive from God in loving each other in spite of how we feel that binds the two of you together, that makes you stronger together than you are apart, that makes you a better person together than you are alone. This is the wonderful thing of the marriage, and it's why we're holding it in a church. We see this as a sacred time in our lives, a sacred step. As we consider our lives together, as you grow in faith together throughout your lives, we think about that sanctifying grace of God that makes us more and more Christ-like in our lives. And Dustin read about the perfecting love of God in the letter of John, of how we are trying to become more Christ-like in our lives. So it is with your marriage as you continue to love each other and work on your relationship together. As you become more Christ-like in your lives, your love for one another will also strengthen. It will continue to bind you together. It will be something that you cherish and rely on time and time again. We don't invite God to be a part of this time together or this covenant because God's presence is already here. Rather, what we do is we reflect and we ask ourselves to remember. We remember that God is here. We remember that God is a part of this, that God is leading the two of you together, that God is helping you to make the vows, but helping you to keep the vows, which is so important. So may this assurance be with you to get today that God will be with you, not only now, but throughout your marriage, throughout your lives together, that you'll be stronger together than you are apart. And may your relationship give not only yourselves, but give the world the grace and peace of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, creator and preserver of all life, author of salvation and giver of all grace, bless and sanctify with your Holy Spirit, Janet and Chase, who come now to join in marriage. Grant that they may give their vows to one another in the strength of your steadfast love. Enable them to grow in love and peace with you and one another all their days that they may reach out in concern and service to all the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Join hands. And Chase, you will go first. Okay. <laughs> in the name of God. In the name of God. I, Chase, take you, Jana. I, Chase, take you, Jana. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poorer. For richer or poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until we are parted by death. Until we are parted by death. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. Jane, if you repeat after me. In the name of God. In the name of God. I, Jana, take you, Chase. I, Jana, take you, Chase. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poorer. For richer or poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness or in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until we are parted by death. Until we are parted to death. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. I have the rings. These rings are an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace, and they signify to us the union between Jesus Christ and his church, but also they signify to us the covenant that Chase and Jana make today. Let us pray. Bless, O oh God, the giving of these rings, that they who will wear them may live in your peace and continue in your favor all the days of their life together. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Repeat after me. 
Janet, I give you this ring. Janet, I give you this ring. As a sign of my vow. As a sign of my vow. And with all that I am. With all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Amen. Chase, I give you this ring. Chase, I give you this ring. As a sign of my vow. As a sign of my vow. And with all that I am. With all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may join hands. Chase and Jana, you have declared your consent and vows before God and this congregation. May God confirm your covenant and fill both of you with God's grace. If you'll face the congregation. Now that Chase and Jana have given themselves to one another, my solemn vows with the joining of hands and the giving and receiving of rings, I announce to you that they are husband and wife in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, those whom God has joined together, let no one put asunder. Amen. Amen. <laughs> As clergy, and this is my first clergy wedding for both, both being clergy, one of the first things that they would like to do is serve Holy Communion uh, together. And so we will share in the ritual of Holy Communion and share in this sacrament together. And they will begin with the invitation and confession. Well, we know that there are so many people from so many different parts of the country and so many different backgrounds and um, perspectives of faith. And what we want to say to you is that today we celebrate an open table meaning that all are invited to come forward and take the sacrament of Holy Communion. That means if you feel like you really want to do that, you're more than welcome. But if you don't feel comfortable taking it, we also want to respect that as well. But I would like to ask all of us if we would just bow and pray silently to ourselves and confess any sins, grievances, or any things that we might have on our conscience. Hear the good news. In the name of Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let us share in the great thanksgiving together. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. God, you formed us in your image. You breathed into us the breath of life. You give us for one another that we might fulfill one another. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Out of that covenant and Spirit flow the love of Chase and Jana today, the covenant that they make today. And so we remember. We remember how Jesus gathered the disciples. And they went to an upper room, and they shared in the Passover meal. And Jesus broke bread, and he blessed it, and he gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this as you gather together in remembrance of me. 
And when they'd finished the supper, Jesus poured wine into the cup and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant that's poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here. And on these gifts of bread and wine, may they be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by His blood. By that same Spirit, bless Chase and Jana today, that their love for one another may reflect the love of Christ for us and grow from strength to strength as they faithfully serve you in the world. And finally, by your grace, bring them and all of us to that table where your saints feast forever in your heavenly home. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. this time we're going to have two stations of communion, one over here on the end, one over here on this end. We'll invite people who would like to receive to come down the outside aisle. You'll come and receive and circle this way and go back to your seats from the inside aisle. And so uh, for, with those who are celebrating, will come and place themselves at the stations and we'll invite you to come. While we're doing this, we'll also have some hymns and if you'd like to sing, they'll be projected on the screens and you're welcome to sing along.
May God, who is eternal, keep you in love with one another, so that the peace of Christ may abide in your home. Go to serve God and serve your neighbor in all that you do. Bear witness to the love of God in this world, so that those to whom love is a stranger will find in you generous friends. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. It is my honor and privilege to announce to you gathered here and to all the world, all those uh, watching from around the world on live stream, <laughs> Chase and Jana Green. Let's get, get the You may kiss the bride. <laughs>